Hi, George here with JustOneDram.com for Whiskey Wednesday. This week, I'm talking about High West's Double Rye. It's a real good bottle for around $30, $35, depending on where you are. Rye whiskey was the big whiskey in, uh, well, in America in the years leading up to Prohibition. Rye is making quite the comeback right now. In fact, you even see a lot of brewing with rye. Uh, Sierra Nevada, Ruthless Rye, and Great Lakes Brewing's Rye the Tiger. Both are seasonal, that are out of season, but good beer. Rye does really, really well as a crop in not the best soil, colder climates, even over winter. So you'll see a lot of rye in places like, well, Vermont, Canada, New York is picking up rye production, especially because of the, the need for, the demand for rye in brewing and distilling. You're seeing a lot more rye being grown in, well, everywhere, especially Canada, but New York is being impacted as well. Let's see. Rye tends to be a spicier, fruitier, a very lively spirit when it's been distilled. I compare it to something like a Speyside single malt. Not a direct comparison, but similar in their liveliness and fruitiness. Let's see. All right. Let's talk about this bottle of rye, not just rye in general. This bottle is a blend of two different ryes. It is a two-year and a 16-year. The mash bill, let me check my notes, on the two-year is 95% rye and 5% barley. Super rye heavy, being youthful with all that rye, it's really got a lot of vibrance because of that. And the 16-year is 53% rye, 37% corn, and 10% barley. So the lower rye content, uh, still legal to be called a straight rye because it is at least 51%. So they're at 53, as they like to call it, barely legal. That corn and barley, well, the corn especially, brings a bit more sweetness to it, rounds it out a bit more. It's not going to be as in-your-face and lively and knocking your teeth out with that rye uh, intensity. So it brings a nice, rounded characteristic to this bottle. Alright, let's pop it open and have a little. High West is in Park City, Utah. Their distiller you can ski into. It's basically, from what I understand, a ski lodge type place. I definitely want to go sometime. Not much of a skier myself, but I've been known to snowboard. Alright. Drinking today out of a Glencairn Canadian whiskey glass. Given the fact that Canadian whiskey is very rye heavy, it's an appropriate glass for a whiskey such as this. You can of course use a traditional Glencairn or tumbler of any kind, but Canadian whiskey felt Canadian whiskey glass felt right. On the nose it's very it's very spicy. Get a little honey. It's kind of herbal, some juniper, kind of gin adjacent in notes back there. Definitely a lot of caramel and vanilla, especially from that 16 year. It's kind of corn heavy for being so vibrant as a rye. Again with that 37 percent corn on the 16 year it does bring a lot of the corn. Kind of get a little sense of way 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 in the back kind of reminds me of paint thinner I'm not saying that is a bad thing it's just something that jumps out nice nose very dominated by the spiciness but the more you really breathe deep take your time you do get a lot of the rounded out caramel vanilla the gin like notes really cool stuff in there on the palate up front, 
a quick punch of the spiciness, followed by some corn. A lot of cinnamon vanilla kind of makes me think of the cinnamon vanilla swirled toffee, saltwater uh, taffy, not toffee, <laughs> saltwater taffy. It's got that sweet caramel vanilla melding of flavors without being, it's a very mellow sweetness of the caramel vanilla. I like it a lot. Kind of want some of that candy now. Definitely peaks real hard and fast in the upfront spicy cinnamoniness of the rye. And when it peaks at that first hit to your tongue, it really quickly mellows out and rounds out with all the corn, the barley. And those other sweeter notes. It's fairly corny compared to other ryes I've had. That again comes from the 37% rye on that 16 year. But it's still very nice. It's still very rye heavy. The finish, definitely a bit spicy. Again, a lot of corn. It's that tingly, mouth coating finish. Doesn't burn at all, but it, for being, I believe it's 92 proof, yeah, 46%, non chill filtered, by the way, which is a good thing. It's very light and elegant on the alcohol burn instead of being like a jet fuel. It's definitely very reined in and well. Good quality alcohols in here. Finish. It's kind of short on that spiciness, but very long and lingering in the, the mouth coating tingly alcohol burn sensation. Very enjoyable. Spent some time with this whiskey, but my first impression of it was, oh, I don't like this, it's too corn heavy. I want more rye, more, more rye. I gave it a little more thought and a little more attention. I gave it second and third chances. The more I drank it, the more I really, really enjoyed it for what it is instead of what I was hoping it to be. And I have to say, this is rightfully so earned 93 points on my scale. Highly recommend the bottle. And let's see. I'm reviewing batch 13K07, bottle 526. I do like the hand numbering. Craft distillery certainly have quite a deal of charm that mass productions do not, including that hand numbering. Yeah, it's a great bottle. Highly recommend it. Definitely one worth having on the shelf. Well, happy Whiskey Wednesday. If you like the video, subscribe, like the video, leave comments what you thought of the review, what you, th what you think of the whiskey, what you'd like to see me review next. Check out all the other videos. Uh, JustOneDram.com, find us on Facebook, all that social media nonsense. Cheers, happy Whiskey Wednesday.